safety happening right now. With President Joe Biden stepping aside, Vice President Kamala Harris is the front runner for the 2024 Democratic nominee. And if Harris becomes president, she will have a profound impact on history as she would be the first female, the first South Asian American, and just the second black American in more than two centuries to become president. She was recently in Philadelphia speaking at a town hall for Asian American voters. This here is the one. This is the one. The most existential, consequential, and important election of our lifetime. We have a lot to lay out here. Dr. Aaron Smith from the Africology African American Studies Department at Temple University joining us once again. Good to see you. Good morning. Good to be here. This, did it come as a surprise to you? Definitely not a surprise to me. I actually predicted it would happen today, mm. and I was surprised that it happened yesterday, but I wasn't surprised that he dropped out, and I think it's what was best. I would have suggested that he do something more of a, a speech, you know, and really utilize the moment to explain to the American people in a way that could have helped whoever was coming after him. I don't know if the letter was the most effective yeah. method, but... but maybe because he's COVID, maybe there would be concerns about yeah. having a camera crew. I don't know. But he is expected to speak um, later this week. And there have been discussions, even while there were rumblings, of fact, how he, folks felt like he needed to step down about Vice President Harris and whether, mm -hmm. you know, she's someone who's electable and, and the reaction to that. But it sounds like, based on since the time after he announced and then he later endorsed right, Kamala Harris, that there has been some growing support for her. Definitely a great case to be made for her to be in, in that position, not just due to the funding that she has access to that other candidates would not have access to, but also this position they're taking in terms of they have a prosecutor and a felon, right? And this juxtaposition that some of the early ads have been, been utilizing, I think is a very powerful way to make the case that this is the person we need and this is the time for that type of individual to take, you know, Trump on because mm -hmm. we don't just want another politician. You know, a lot of people say you have somebody who's been convicted of all these, you know, different felonies and crimes, but there's nobody really holding the, this person accountable. So in terms of accountability and somebody who's not afraid to confront, you know, Donald Trump, I think she did very well even in the vice, vice presidential debates last time. And I think that's when she's at her best, actually. But as you know, this is politics. There is not a oh, consensus yeah. among the Democratic no, Party not. here. We <laughs> saw President Biden endorse her. President, former President Obama has yet to do so, and I think it's mm -hmm. more political. He's waiting to see how oh, yeah. the landscape plays out. But there are some Democrats who are ready for a fight here, and it could be a legal fight. And I think it'd be beautiful if we really have a contested election, first time, you know, in, in a few decades. But I think that would really give the people the type of energy and agency that we've been looking for. We want to feel like we're part of this process. We want to feel like we're being heard. Mm -hmm. And I think a contested election where people really nominate from each state who they want and we collectively decide, that'll give us that consensus and collective we need. But is there time for that? I mean, you think about how far this election is. Well, that's what the convention used to be about. The yeah. convention used to be, you know, we all come mm -hmm. together. I mean, France set a good example of how to come together and coalesce. Um, we need to take some tips, like from the Marvel Universe, you know, <laughs> to make our world a little better and put some other things aside. But what's interesting also at play here is, um, you know, some folks, and let's face it, whether it's the Republican side or the Democratic side, the fight for black votes and black voters, and specifically mm -hmm. black women, how would that look, too, um, if... This, folks say it should be Harris. Some people feel that way. If they're like, oh, is there anybody else? Or if she's not put in that position, how would that resonate with black voters and as well as black women voters who, as we know, have been a very strong force when it comes to elections? I think the fact that there's only one other black candidate, that a potential candidate being discussed who's not nearly as seasoned or really prepared for the position really helps Harris in that regard. It doesn't really divide the black vote mm -hmm. in terms of somebody who wants to see that level of representation. Right. So I think she's in a good position as far as that. But in terms of the potential legal challenges, I think having legal minds at the focus of this, yeah. this process mm -hmm. will be advantageous as well. And I just want to reference, this is um, uh, a post that was put out because there were 44,000 black women voters got on a call and they raised 1.5 million dollars in the hours after wow. mere hours after the announcement so it shows the power of that but I'm, I was also referring to not just another black candidate but stepping over her if they decide to pick someone else instead of Vice President Harris how that would look um, as well unless it's a choice from the people in mm -hmm. a contested convention I think that they should make sure that they allow the people's voice to be heard and that image that you just showed uh, is loud and clear that there's a considerable amount of people who think that she's capable and ready and I think a good conversation 
conversation now for us uh, in terms of Democrats is the vice presidential yeah. pick. Because I only see three potential picks. I don't know, you know, I know they're putting a lot of names out Are there. Are you looking at key swing states here? Definitely. Yeah. I'm seeing Bashir um, in terms of the youth, and he has a regional impact, even though Kentucky is probably not up for grabs. Sure. There's this situation with Cooper. I think Cooper can deliver North Carolina. North Carolina in 2020, we're talking about less than 2% of a difference, right? Mm -hmm. So that is a good strategic move. But of course, I'm biased to the hometown. And I would say, since I talked about having this prosecutor, why not have a dream Shapiro. team, right? <laughs> Shapiro and Harris, I think that is the ticket that could win and should win and should be the ticket. I'm not just saying that, you know. A lot of eyes on Pennsylvania, but then you have the fear of losing perhaps a Democratic governor in the state of Pennsylvania and where the uh, special election would go. I think we can sacrifice for the greater good as Pennsylvanians, <laughs> you know, if Mr. Shapiro, you know, sees fit. Yeah, mm -hmm. a lot to lay out mm -hmm. in the day's oh, yeah. Certainly yes. appreciate your time, Dr. Aaron Smith. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you, Professor. Okay, let's get to 